Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. Welcome. Uh, I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, tonight, we're going to discuss a, a few topics. Uh, one would like to do a simple exercise for uh, helping with the uh, urinary tract, and uh, which also uh, is a very powerful exercise for activating the huyin and uh, the penetrating vessels, so that's a, that's a cool one. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Earth Chi, since we are in the uh, in the time of year which is governed by the Earth element, late summer. And uh, let's see, I think that that was pretty much it, and uh, plus a couple other things just to get the get the chi moving. So. Uh, so yes, we are in the uh, late summer. So the the element that governs late summer is is Earth, and the organs that that govern that or are affected by that are the spleen and stomach meridians. So the uh, we want to nurture those as well, and also get the direct access to uh, Earth Chi. And um, so uh, we'll do a few things to uh, kind of play with that. First thing I want to do is talk about the uh, idea, uh, what we can do for the urinary tract. So uh, the, uh, I like to approach it from not just a direct fix for that, but sort of a rising tide lifts all boats sort of solution, which is to enhance the energy in the lower abdomen. And as we do that, we also reclaim the, uh, the flow of chi in that area and support it. And we're gonna add a, uh, a, a, a specific thing where you lift uh, on your, your uh, the muscles that your, um, uh, your, in your lower abdomen where you particularly around your genitals, where like as if you're trying to restrain yourself from having to, uh, to uh, oh, let me get that, that AC. Sorry about that. So if you're trying to restrain yourself from having to urinate, so the, uh, that, that, that tightening there, which, uh, uh, some people might recognize as like a Kegel exercise, which is contracting those muscles, and you do that and you sustain that, and that's done at a at a physical level, and that's 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 good. I prefer a lighter touch where it's just more of a lifting, where you're lifting on the perineum, and just lightly activating those muscles without clenching. So it's a little different than a Kegel, but it's a similar kind of idea. We're gonna work with that with the breath as well. So the, the idea here is to deep diaphragmatic breathing. So ordinarily when we breathe and we're not doing diaphragmatic breathing, the, as soon as the diaphragm starts to press down on the, on the internal organs, there's, we have a signal that activates the intercostal muscles in the chest, contracts those, and the chest expands. So that's, uh, that's we do a, a chest breathing or thoracic breathing. And that has a tendency to jack us up to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and get us working, get uh, activates things, and it moves us more into a energy out kind of situation. If it's done a lot, a very shallow breathing, then we tend to get a little more into the sympathetic than we like, and we tend to get a little hyper anxious, etc. So if we want to calm the autonomic nervous system, we override that impulse. So as you breathe in, you feel the diaphragm pushing down, and rather than, than breathing into the chest, you continue to push down with the diaphragm into the belly. And the belly may expand with that. It doesn't have to, but it can as it expands, you create more space for 
for the breath. You get actually two to three times as much breath uh, per try, too much, uh, two to three times as much air per breath so as, you, as you do that. So it just, let's do a few of those where you just, as you breathe, notice that impulse to expand your chest and just keep going. And to a count of three and then exhale to a count of three. Inhale to a count of three, feel that expansion into down into your abdomen. And exhale to a count of three. And one more. And notice that just by doing three breaths like that, it calms things down. You immediately start to shift into the parasympathetic. And you're, you're, they're, they're doing a, a seesaw anyway, just that sometimes the sympathetic gets more more uh, of a, uh, a push than the, than the parasympathetic. So this way we're kind of balancing things out. So we take it one step further. And this time you're going to not just override the impulse to activate the chest muscles, but also to the expanding belly. So that is you want to just allow the breath to continue to press down until it reaches your, your perineum the area between your genitals and where the hui in is, the, uh, which uh, is the, the, the root of your, it's like the, the most yin point on your torso. And whenever we activate the hui in, there's a, uh, it, it connects up your conception vessel and your governing vessel and also your penetrating or thrusting vessel. And when that happens, you, you're, you get a reservoir of chi in your, in your body. So this is, you have something which then spills out into all the other meridians. These are like the big channels. And so if you do that, so as you breathe in, you breathe in all the way down to your hui in and just lift gently on the perineal area, the perineum and as you do that, and that directs the traffic down to there, and that allows that you to activate this most yin part of your body, and this supports and nurtures you as well. So let's do, let's just do that for a minute. And so the idea is you breathe in for a count of three, hold for a count of three, and then exhale for a count of three. And begin. Lift as you inhale and hold, and then release as you exhale. It helps to place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, just behind your teeth. And 
relax. Good. So just by doing that, you can do it as long as you like. You can do it often. Even do it for a breath is, is helpful because you're making this energetic connection. You're, you're connecting up the conception vessel the, and, and, the, uh, and the governing vessel, and you're also activating the penetrating vessel. So you get this, this big boost of, of, of energy circulating throughout the whole system, which is going to nurture everything in the whole system. Plus you're activating this very yin part of your body and this allows you to access the earth chi even better and to ground out some of the excess yang chi. Particularly if you're like doing a lot of intellectual work or computer work, stuff like that, you tend to get up here and you want it to go all the way down out through the bottoms of your feet. But if you are locked up in your lower abdomen, if the, if, even if it's not tense, if it's just not active, you're going to have a, uh, there's going to be a reduced flow. You're not going to be grounding that energy and that's going to have an effect. Do you, do you hold, do you lift your muscles when you hold your breath? You just lift gently with the, uh, yeah, with the, with the, as you, as you inhale and hold the breath and then as you exhale, you release. Okay, while you're holding while you're holding your breath, you're still lifting. Yeah. So and then you just just when when you're holding, it's not a it's not like that. It's just a a gentle kind of feeling into it, feeling the breath nurturing you, circulating, and it's sort of it's a, it's a very loving thing that we're doing here. Okay. So uh, the uh, other thing that oh Valerie, you have a question. Thrusting um, meridian. Sorry? I'm thrusting vessel. I'm thrusting not vessel, sure. yes. The thrusting vessel, it, uh, it is, um, uh, goes up just inside your, inside your spine. From, it starts at, at, the, uh, at the perineum and goes up, uh, I think, to the bai hui. I think, I, think, I think up to the top, to the crown point. And... Um, it parallels the um, Sushumna Nada in, in yoga, which is the, uh, the, the area that the Kundalini spirit comes up. So it's a very expansive, very powerful energy that comes up there. The difference between the Chinese approach to it and the, uh, and the Indian is that, from, from my knowledge, the, it, in the, in the Indian approach, it begins at the... Uh, uh, at the uh, Muladhara chakra, which is at the at the uh, perineum, uh, the first chakra, and then goes up, and the energy is, is one direction. Whereas in the Chinese view, that there is also from the Huiyin going down the Yin meridians in your leg goes out through uh, uh, out through the bubbling well in your feet, and maybe Guillermo could. Uh, could weigh in on that and just uh, let me know if that uh, actually uh, makes sense from your perspective as an acupuncturist. Does that sound right, Guillermo? Yeah, okay, good. So what we're doing is the energy is not just, it's not just an ascending energy, it's also going down through the feet. So if we get into central equilibrium, we do this other part, which opens up that. So if you just stand up and you feel the balls of your feet, you set your knees over the balls of the feet. Reach with your knee one. So we have this energy going up, also energy going down. So we, this way we get this body, mind, spirit integration. So uh, let's do that just for a minute in the, in the standing posture now too, just using the the uh, central equilibrium to allow us to access the earth chi, earth chi coming up through the feet, up through the body, out through the top of the head, going up the thrusting vessel and out through the, into the, into the heavens and the, the yang chi of the heavens coming down and out through the feet. But by doing that and re releasing, you want to get that qua released, just kind of do a little boom, boom there, get, release the qua and just, 
settle into that. So now as you do that, do the same thing. As you breathe, breathe down into, all the way down into the wheel, lift as you breathe in and hold your breath. And as you exhale, you relax and release. And continue to do that. We'll just do that for a minute also. Notice the feeling in your perineum as you consciously, gently lift there. You're contracting the muscles but not tensing them. Placing the tip of the, the tongue behind the teeth on the roof of the mouth closes the circuit there too. Lifting at the wee in also does that. So you have this, you have a microcosmic orbit as the NG is circulating in the governing vessel and the conception vessel. Just step in, breathe deep, and disappear the chi. Just clearing that, allowing for the chi to flow through you all by itself. You, you establish the pathway, now you let it go. Uh, anybody else have a question? Richard. Um, I just, I just want to kind of get the pattern straight. As we're breathing in, we're expanding our diaphragm and we started by expanding our diaphragm all the way down to the way in. So right, you're breathing pushing, in. It's, it's actually extending. It's as it the muscles contract. It presses down. Expand, it expands downward. The, the diaphragm. Yes, the yeah, diaphragm okay. expands downward. Right. And at the same time, we're lifting the way in. Yes. Okay, that was it. Yep. So I'm, just I'm in a little. There. I'm in a little conflict at the moment by about learning to do those two things at the same time. Ah, okay. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Thank uh, you. But it, uh, uh, how did that feel? That, uh, that, uh, is that good? Good? Very good. Okay, great. Yeah. And you want to feel it. You want to feel that because you're connecting up because most of us are like really spending a whole lot of time up here and to actually feel into your genitals, that, that area and allow the chi to go because the, the, the primary maxim is, you know, the E leads the chi, the chi leads the blood. And, you know, the E being the, the, your consciousness or your higher wisdom self, it, you know, your intention leads the chi and the chi, then the, the, the body's juices go to the area, they follow the chi. So if you want to nurture that area and you want to restore your vigor in, uh, and your urogenital system, as well as control there, you bring more mindfulness to that area, and it seems to it seems to help. That's 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 the that's the energetic approach that I would take for that. Cool. Any other questions on that? I think I'd like to uh, I'd like to tie it in also with with the qua, because a any tension in the qua. Your, this area right here will 
block the chi into the urogenital system. So something we've been playing with a little bit lately, I like to go back to it right now and just go through a, a few exercises. Put your right foot forward. And we're gonna do some uh, slow motion quad exercises. You know, we've been doing this one here where we kind of, we do like that. Well, we're gonna slow it way down and actually feel into it. So you feel the ball of the foot. You set your knee over the ball of the foot. So if you see it in profile here, you see my, my knee and, and my foot there. I'm gonna have it straight on so that my knee and my, my big toe are heading in the same direction, okay? And I pick up my back heel so that all my weight is in my front, my front foot. And you'll notice that you might want to cheat back to your heel when you pick up that back, back foot. Don't. You want to bring your body weight forward enough so that you're feeling it pressing straight down on that, on the ball of the foot. And then you can put your, actually put your hand on your, your thigh so the, the thigh doesn't move. So what you, as you release and spiral down to the right, notice that, that my, my leg is still pointing forward, even though my navel is now pointing over that direction. Okay, I start here and I, ah, uh, I spiral, spiral down, okay? You wanna keep your spine straight, so you don't wanna lean over as you do it. So as you do it, and then you turn back to center without bobbing up. So the idea is not to do this and then bob up and down, it's to spiral down and then turn so that you're back to here, right? And then spiral down to the right, Really sink into that and feel that. And notice that it's a, it's a bit of a load there, that uh, your body's not used to, to taking that much energy into that and take it back to center. Now spiral down to the left. Also keeping the, the knee is pointing straight ahead, but my body is over this way. Sink down into that and just feel into that and then turn back to center. Don't bob up, just spiral down. You're releasing down, you're opening, opening up this area here. You're feeling the inside of your thighs are doing some work and then back to center. And now go into your back foot, your left foot, keep your right foot forward. Feel the ball, uh, see, feel, set the knee over the ball of the foot. And here you're going to be turning down to the left now. The knee stays set, the knee's still pointing out this direction, my body's pointing that way. And really release down into that. So just by hanging there and feeling into your quaff, then you're going to start to get familiar with it. You start to learn to trust this and then turn back to center. And then spiral down to the left. Really release down. Keep feeling that ball of the foot is the pivot point. Not the bubbling well, the ball of the foot. And really release that and settle in and then turn back to center. Spiral down to the right. All the weight is in your left leg. You're spiraling down to the right and the knee still pointing forward, but your body's over this way. Relaxing down, settling down into that, and then turning back to center. And sprawl down to the right. Rick, when you're on the back foot, do you want your, is your foot at a diagonal or is it straight ahead? Straight ahead. Straight ahead, okay. Your foot, is, you. your foot is on the diagonal, you're right. Oh, the it's on the on, diagonal. Your foot is on, on the 45, or it's on some sort of diagonal. Okay. And then back to center. Good. Now, so yeah, if, uh, can we get, uh, yeah. we go. you can see my feet now, right? Yeah. So, okay, so my left foot is forward now. Okay, and I'm going to pick up my right heel, set my knee, spiral down to the left, and really hang there, just sort of feel into that and turn back to center. 
And as we do this, spiral down to the left, as we do this, we start to develop confidence in the quad. We start to let it, ah, uh, or let it relax more, which takes away the tension that's, the chronic tension that's in the hips and back to center. Because a lot of people have hip problems. Now spiral down to the right. And by removing the self-imposed muscular constrictions that we, that we establish, we can then allow the, the energy to flow more freely and back to center. Allow the energy to flow more freely and that will nurture the urogenital area as well as uh, benefit the whole system. Because you're, as we're doing this, we're opening up to the earth chi. We're allowing the earth chi to, to bubble up and back to center. Good. And back into your right foot. I'll pick up your left heel. So your back foot is, is there. We're going to spiral down to the right. Really hang there. Settle in. Notice that my body's not leaning. You know, I'm not pushing my butt out, not pushing my butt back. I'm just rotating and back to center. And spiral down to the right. And back to center. This is where Tai Chi power comes from. This, now go back into 50-50 stance. And just stick into your right leg, spiral down to the right, turn to the left, turn to the right. Now feel your ball of your left foot, spiral down to the right, turn to the left. The weight's in the left leg now, turn to the right. Now we're going to shift into the right leg. To the ball, set the knee, spiral right, turn left, turn right, good, left leg, spiral right, turn left, turn right. And you can continue to do that on and on, kind of just like da 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 da. So you're learning to, to be able to activate that very easily. And the this area becomes quite open, quite loose, and you can instantaneously move from qua to qua as you need to. If you need to neutralize it, boom, you can immediately do that either front, the front leg or the back leg, it doesn't matter. So uh, uh, any questions on this? This is foundational for, for my Kung Fu. It's just that if you can't do this, you know, you got, you got to learn this. This is a, uh, being able to do that is crucial for getting the energy to circulate. It also takes a load off of your hips, your knees. If you're doing it correctly, you will feel no knee strain whatsoever from that. There will be no knee injuries, you know, and you also, allow yourself to access a ridiculous amount of power as a result of that. Because this part of your body that the qua area is, is the home of some of the most powerful muscles in your body. And uh, so if you, if they are in competition with each other, if they're clashing with each other, then you have a, uh, a, 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 a blockage, yes, a jam up in your, in your pelvic area. And that's Rick. not fun. Okay, so... Uh, One comment, Rick. Please. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how even if you feel you're kind of soon, and then you do these exercises, and when you finish and you stand 50-50, you can feel how the feet are just more glued to the floor, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. And and one que one question, or what can you Please. advise? Like, there's always one like uh, the insubstantial leg to keep it more, to have the same kind of connection. I I guess it's to feel both balls of the f of both feet, right? Yes. There's one. There's one. Uh, one heavier. If you're doing it in the fifty-fifty that you just did, like just one going from one side to the other. 
to keep the same kind of connection, we feel okay, both right. balls of eggs of are they have a different amount of substantiality. So if, uh, if I'm standing like this, I go to my right claw, I can spiral it down and I can have it 60-40 or 70-30 or 80-20 or 90-10. You know, it just, I can, I can, I can regulate that. And then coming back, I can, I can decide which, how much substantiality I want in, in which leg. I can also just energetically, we have it just 55, 45, boom, in the right leg. But it, it just by doing that, just the fact of releasing my claw means that this is my dominant leg and doesn't matter, doesn't matter uh, how much weight is in it. It's, it's the commitment of consciousness and energy to that leg is what makes that happen. As a, uh, as a martial artist, what that means is that incoming force, I can go boom, boom, either one, and I am like 70, 30 instantly as I receive that. And I can take the energy and, and redirect it and be entirely rooted in, in, in whichever leg I want. And that, you know, that's done 50, 50 this way, but it can also be done in a bow stance. It can be done in a, in a horse stance, you know, whatever you, whatever you like, it's, you, you have that, when you have that connection, it, you're instantly rooted. You've got that, uh, you got the whole body activated as a result of that. Okay. And it's going to, and... go ahead. No, no, no. It's, I understand. Oh, yeah, but I appreciate your comments. That, that's, that's, that's very helpful. Okay. Um, Just one brief okay. clarification on the Chang Meridian that you were talking about. It actually uh -huh. goes to the eye. It goes and to the eye? the eye? Yeah, and, and to the what, what, big what toe. Path does it the can, you, can you share the path that goes, it goes up the it, spine it, and goes over the top of the head? No, it has mostly kidney points, so it's on the, on the chest, you know. Okay. But it starts, it goes, it has several branches, but it, it, uh, the lowest it goes is spleen one, and then in the big toe, and then to the eye. But mostly okay. kidney points on the chest. Great, thanks. On the torso, you can Good. better and It's uh, very important for all the stuff we're talking about here, too, with the, with, uh, the urinary tract, and as well as uh, sexuality. It's, it's very important for uh, sexual energy and uh, just creative force. It's a very, it's a very dynamic uh, uh, energy. Exactly, uh, the, the lower abdomen and all that part, not the chest, yeah, sorry. Great, thank you, that's good, good. Okay, so uh, moving on to Earth Chi. Yes, yeah, so uh, um, Earth Chi is big and round. It's, I'm gonna give you just my impressions from what I've, uh, from what I've heard through the years, uh, I'm sure uh, Guillermo can even uh, embellish this as, as an acupuncturist. But the, uh, the idea, it's, it's round like the earth and it is centered, it's integrated, and it has to do with your ability to assimilate and metabolize, digest. It's governed by the spleen and the stomach radians and it has a tendency to uh, to allow you to, to take in experience and not be overwhelmed by it, be able to absorb it. And it also is central to all the other meridians so the, uh, or all the other uh, elements. And so the, uh, uh, it is a piece of, of that earth element that is found as each of the other elements transition for like two weeks between, between the say the um, wood chi and the fire chi, the wood chi of spring and and the fire chi, fire chi of summer. There's a, a two week period there, which is as we're as the wood chi is winding down and the fire chi is building up. There is also a, a certain amount of earth uh, element involved in that as well. So. Uh, but right now, this is the, this, the time of year, which is 
traditionally considered to be the earth time. And um, so getting that, and uh, we've done the, uh, the thing to balance out the triple warmer and the, and, uh, the spleen. And just like to review that right now, just because it's, a, it's such, a, such a handy one for, for calming you down instantly. And triple warmer gets you excited. It's designed, designed to, to activate whatever you, uh, uh, you need to get it done. You know, and the spleen has a tendency to bring it back down and, and calm, it, calm it down. So the, uh, the two are playing with each other. And the, this, the, uh, my understanding is the triple warmer pulls a large part of its, its energy from the spleen in order, to, uh, in order to handle emergencies. So one, uh, one tool that I learned from Donna Eden, which I, I've used over the years very successfully to calm things down, is to put, uh, put one hand on the rib cage. So this is a spleen area. And and the other hand on the outside of your your arm. This is a triple warmer runs on the outside of the arm, and just to give yourself a hug, and breathe a couple of times into the nose, out through the mouth. And then switch, go to the other side. And the hugging part is important too, because that's an earthy touch. It secures you. It's uh, it it you know restrains, holds. Yeah, that has a tendency to balance out that energy. Um, I like to do a, a qigong exercise. Uh, very simple bear exercise for earth chi. So actually any questions on, on that before we go forward? We've covered some of that before. We're good. Everybody good? Okay, good. So let's do a little, uh, let's do a little bear, little bear chi going. So stand up. We're going to keep this real simple because we're, uh, I know people don't have a lot of room sometimes, so I just want to keep it real simple. You can do the, this, there'll be some stepping forward and backward with this, but, uh, you know, use your judgment. You can actually do it standing, standing still also and get the same, get, uh, you know, get the, get the feeling of it. But begin, just find your, get your three pillars in, feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the knee one, get your elbows out, tuck in your chin, lift your, your, your knee one and open the jade pillow gate. Feel the weight over the balls of your feet, knees are unlocked. Boom, boom, just release your hip joints and step out. And find that central equilibrium again in this new position. Let's sink. And carry. And here you want your arms big and round. Notice the elbows are up and, and reaching, reaching out. I'm not like this. I'm big and round. It's like I'm hugging a tree. Feel your arms you know, pressing in and feel the resistance of the energy inside the circle. Feel your arms also pushing out and feel the resistance of the space outside your arms. So just by 
the exercise we've already done, you're already opening up the energy gates. And you can feel a whole lot of chi. And this is a very earthy kind of chi right now. It's big and round and expansive. And then press down. Carry. Reach with your elbows. Open the shoulder joints. Big. Round. Good. Now sink into your the ball of your left foot. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. Pick up your left foot and your arms go to the right. Step forward with your right foot. Sink into your right quad. Hold that for a moment. Pick up your left heel. Pick up your left foot and step forward. And turn to the left. Sink into your left quad. Hold that. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulders, reach with your knee wand, feel the expansion. Pick up your left heel, step forward with your right foot, turn to the right. Feel that. Turn to the left, step back with your right foot and sink into your back foot now, but maintain your center equilibrium. Turn to the right, step back with your left foot, sink into your left quad. Feel that. Feel the energy. Turn to your left. Step back with your right foot. Sink into that. Good. Turn back to center. Good. down. And go to a uh, horse stance. So bring your heels out, pivot on the ball of your foot, and then bring your feet out. So you're notice that my feet are wider than my shoulders. Okay. Feel the balls of the feet, set the knees, sink. And as you sink, the arms come up. Keep the weight over the balls of the feet. This is essential. Reach with the knee wand, reach with the elbows. Now bring the hands down. And feel the feel the bear there. Feel the earth chi, big and round and solid, rooted, connected, powerful. Feel it moving through your arms, your legs. Feel it sinking into your bones, sinking into the bone marrow.
Step in. Deep breath. And clear. And just stand in this neutral posture, empty out. Allow the chi to just move through. Don't hang on to anything. Allow it to circulate without restrictions. Have a seat. How do I feel? Wow. <laughs> Felt good. Very grounding. Good. Very, very powerful. The, uh, well, it's, it's a bear. So it's, it's, it's nice. Cool. Any questions on that? Lynn. Well, I, it was, wow, as I said, um, it was magnificent. Um, but it was also so powerful that it was hard to let go of. Like my mm. body was liking it so much. It didn't want to let go of it. So I had to do a little like, you know, convincing, <laughs> um, which I found that's, you know, usually it's like, okay, time to clear and you're clear. But that was, it was, I think it was still sinking into my bones. It may be the medicine you need. I think, too. yeah, I think so. Because it, it yeah. hit my, the wrist that I broke when I was 13, and that's always a sign that. Oh, wow. You felt that in, in, that, in that spot. That's, that's cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. Okay. Um, so that's, that's Earth Tree. That's just a, a, a little taste of Earth Tree. There's lots of other things you can do with that, but that's, uh, that's, a, good, uh, uh, that's a good one. A little, you, you can kind of get a, a flavor for it. And you want to be able to tune into that, not just in your Qigong exercises, but anytime. So, and they're very, you know, just kind of go there and be able to say, oh, okay, this is, this is what feeding it. Do you want to have your energy to kind of, align with the seasons. So we've gone through the wild, fiery summer where go, 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 go. And then now it's, things are starting to go from, from the maximum yang to now we're starting to say, okay, we're getting a little more yin now. And it moves in that direction. So from, from here we go into metal chi in the fall, which gets even more yin. That's where things start to, to get a little more a little denser and uh, moving into then into water, which is the most yin. But as you, if you work with the seasons, then you can, uh, they will feed the next, the next energy and you build on that. And then you start to accumulate this, uh, like a momentum going, going around where every, every season kind of is there to, to nurture and provide for the uh, what's to come, and so you're you're laying a foundation for an even better future. So uh, to be able to be oh, cognizant, oh yeah, this is this is that earthy time. All right, so I'm going to do that, and you start to 
be a little more cognizant of the yin and and just say oh yeah okay weather's changing a little bit so we'll start to notice that and things are a little different and then you play with that let's do a um, another thing i wanted to talk about this time was uh uh do we have time we got 10 minutes let's do a uh uh a simple exercise we've done it before but i'd like to emphasize feeling the differences in the energy in different positions okay and very slight and so much so that oftentimes there's we don't have the words for it but uh, stand up get uh, your uh, get your three pillars in step out So the idea is we're going to be bringing the arms up, but out to the side, but very slowly. And we're going to pause along the way and just feel into what that feels like, not just in the arms and the shoulders, but also throughout the whole body. And as you bring your arms up, you want to reach with your elbows. This will make it a lot easier than if you just reach with your shoulders. You reach with your elbows and that leads the way. So just bring your arms out like this. So they're kind of rounded out to the side. And just feel into that. Take a breath or two, take a couple of breaths. And just feel into that. You relax the shoulders and continue to reach with the elbows and bring it out a little more. Reaching out, opening, and feel the difference between those two postures energetically because there's going to be a change as you each step of the way and then reach with your wrists and come up a little more and notice that each step of the way your whole body has to make adjustments to allow for this change of posture you're going to feel it all the way through your feet and into the earth. And bring it up a little more. Notice that the energy has changed yet again. I don't have words for these changes, but I do recognize that something's going on. And I choose this, part, this, uh, this exercise because it's a real simple one, but this is true in every Tai Chi form and every Qigong. And just bringing mindfulness to something that is happening and a little more. I call this uh, the Vitruvian man, because actually the, uh, the, the Da Vinci uh, diagram. A little more. Just feel the difference. And as you feel into this, you're changing your nervous system. You're changing your brain mapping. A little more. Feel the the closeness of the hands and bring them together. As you bring them together, reach up with your hands and sink down, bend your knees and sink down. Separate the hands, open. Bring it down. One more. 
Keep reaching out. We're really opening up the joints. Down a little more. Notice the energy shifts. It tends toward the yin. Now I've got a word for it. Uh, this feels a little more yin down here. A little more. Oh yeah, even a little more yin. When my hands were overhead, that felt very young. Now it feels much more yin. And back to start. You feel that. So by bringing mindfulness to any posture, any Tai Chi form or Qigong, what do you do? Whatever you do, if you bring mindfulness to this, you will notice that every little piece Every little change brings about a different energy quality. And step in. Deep breath. And dissolve. Feel, feel like there's a big cloud coming in. You're becoming part of that cloud. You're dissolving, dissolving your bones and your muscles and your blood, dissolving your energy, dissolving your thoughts. Just letting it go, letting go of form for a moment. You're just resonating with now. Right. Okay, grab a seat. Good, how'd that go? You can unmute everybody. You just kind of, yeah. Great, good, good. Scott. Um, yeah, I mean, the difference between each state was huge. You know, they weren't subtly different. They were majorly different. And um, interestingly enough, on the way up, I was close to the wall, but no problem. On the way down, I actually had to step over because my arm got longer. <laughs> I, I didn't move anything. I, I, I have seen this happen, so I, I, I know what you're thinking of. Yes, yes, this 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 will happen. Your arms will get longer, substantially, <laughs> not not by little too, like like an inch or so. Yeah, yeah, an inch or two. Yeah, it's it's wild. Cool. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Okay, great. Well, thank you all very much. Oh, Stan, you had something? Valerie. Oh. Valerie. Valerie. When the arms were all the way up and yeah. you know, actually touching, I, I don't know what was going on in the jade pillow, but it was glowing. <laughs> it, I, you know, I tried not to just go there. I wanted to feel everything, but that was just... Uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know what was going on, but it was kind Wonderful. of amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Stan, you had something? You need to un unmute, Stan. You need to unmute. <laughs> okay. There you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question on the greeting that we were doing. 
involving everything. Uh, it seems like it. Move it, your thumb from the uh, the, the camera. Oh, there you go. oh sorry. <laughs> uh, it seemed that when I'm uh, breathing, I spent so much time trying to get the diaphragm down that I'm not uh, exactly seeing uh, which way uh, you've mentioned something's going up and some things are not. Uh, or do we need to be concerned with that? The thrusting vessel or anything like that when we're uh, practicing breathing? No, you don't, have to, you don't have to think about that. I'm just, that's just something that's happening. Don't, don't oh. worry about it. You know, the two things you, you do concern yourself with are lifting the perineum. Right. The, the, the muscles there and then yes. and bring your breath down. That's all. Okay. Yeah, everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, everything. It seems like uh, so much. Uh, maybe uh, we're not. I we haven't been doing it that much, but it takes. Uh, how shall I say? Uh, really working on bringing the diaphragm down. Oh yeah. And of course, they. We had uh, to bring that up a little bit, but so everything else. Uh, so I guess the best thing is, if something happens, just pay attention, and that's about it. It seems that's what you're telling me. Just see, uh, just she, she's, gonna do it. she's gonna do it, its thing. So you there just you, you just set it up, it'll it'll do fine. Oh, great. So anybody else? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Thank, Thank, you, Thank Rick. you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Love you all. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Thanks, Rick. Good night, Thanks, everybody. Rick.